All right, so here we are, it's the next day. Let's see if our tank held pressure. Yeah, we're still at 140, so I'd say we're all good there. I just gotta continue running the lines to the front now, so go ahead and knock that out real quick. All right, before we go any further, you guys, let's sit here and talk tubing for a minute because it's very important very important to understand that not all airlines are created equal and what I mean by that they have different uh, you know pressure ratings temper working temperature ratings and all kinds of stuff like that so it's critical that you guys pay attention to the little details um, you know that your airlines are pretty much the the veins of your air system so if you blow an airline pretty much you're dying you're you're going down that that's pretty much the easiest way I can put it but anyway, um, there's a whole bunch of different sizes and types. Um, we got just some basic just air compressor line, 300 PSI rating, not too shabby, typical barb fitting, hose clamp. These work, and I've used these. I had, a, I had barb fittings and all that shit on my Ranger for about 15 years, and that stuff's still on it. But for the most part, modernized air suspension systems utilize these push lock fittings, so we're going to focus on these types of tubes. Now the three different sizes I got here is I got quarter inch, three eighths, and I got two pieces of half inch line right here, okay? Now at a glance, both of these pieces of half inch line appear the same, but they are very, very different, okay? Now if you, like I said, you got to pay attention to the little details because most of the manufacturers will print basic specifications on the line just so, you know, you can look at it and determine if that's what you need. So anyway if you look here it says WP that stands for working pressure and 150 PSI that's pretty much what most airlines is most airline is rated at but if you look beyond there it says at 72 degrees Fahrenheit so that is that is like room temperature okay so it's rate it's 150 PSI rated at at room temperature so you put this under a truck and it's like you know, let's just say 120 degrees underneath that truck, that working pressure is just gonna drop, okay? And this shit is just gonna ultimately blow out on you. So, you wanna read these little fine print numbers, okay? And what you guys wanna pay attention to is, okay, see right here, this is um, nylon air brake tubing that they use for like semi trucks and big rigs and stuff. And if you look here, it says air brake, uh, 1913 but it says DOT so it's approved by the Department of Transportation and if you keep going on here it's also been approved by the SAE Society of Automotive Engineers so this is the type of line you want to use okay if you, if you plan on using the push lock fittings just look for this stuff and there's also a couple different types of this uh, line here as you can see this one says type if you can read that I'm gonna grab this piece because it's a little more visible but it says type B okay this is 3 eighths this is half inch this is quarter inch okay now what were we talking about the type A and the type B this is type B and this quarter inch line here is type A okay and what is the difference type A is just single wall nylon extruded just you know just single wall nylon tubing now if you look here this type B has a nylon core and then it's been fiber reinforced all throughout which you ain't gonna be able to see but inside here there's like braided nylon fibers and then another nylon jacket to protect it so this is the the stuff you want to use right here okay not necessarily this brand but you want to pay attention to the you want to make sure it's DOT rated and it's type B for the most part now for smaller uh, lines like gauges and stuff like that I've had a difficult time finding like quarter inch or eighth inch line in type B so type A works fine you just gotta like I said just take really good consideration of where and where you route your lines and how you route them and just keep them away from you know your exhaust keep them away from moving parts like your drive shaft and shit obviously you know keep them away from uh, anywhere they're gonna chafe or if they got like jagged sharp edges or anything they're wrapped around you know that's another thing I like to do sometimes like for example if I know I gotta pass it through like a hole or something like that I'll get some just cheap ass you know protective sleeve and just cut little bits of it and just kinda 
sleeve over the line as I pass it through something. That way, you know, it gives it another little layer of protection. I don't got to worry about it getting chafed or cut through. But, uh, yeah, I forgot what the fuck I was talking about. But, but yeah, like I said, type A, type B, this shit works awesome. These push lock fittings are amazing. You simply just push the line in there, and once it's in there, you cannot pull that out. And once it gets back pressure behind it, it bites even harder, which is pretty cool. If you look inside, you can see in there a bunch of jagged little metal teeth. And then just beyond there, there's an O-ring. So once you insert it all the way, you can literally feel it seat and then just give it a nice little tug and you're good to go. When you pull it out, you can kind of see, I don't know if you guys can, but yeah, you can see how it bites into the line. So these things are awesome. Oh, and uh, that's another thing. Not all these uh, fittings are created equal as well. Like I said here, you got uh, this metal bodied one, and then you got like this plastic or nylon, whatever bodied one. I don't like using these style at all because, you know, I've seen these ones personally fail. Like the, the plastic fittings, I've seen them blow out. So if you can, by all means, try to use the all metal body ones. Now they do also make DOT approved uh, push lock fittings that are like all brass and they're they're awesome, but I gotta tell you, they're like, depending on what size you need and what you need, they're freaking expensive, so, yeah. But it's up to you if you want to use them. And, um, you know, a lot of people are using, uh, you know, if you look in magazines and on YouTube and stuff like that at people's custom uh, car setups, a lot of them got, you see in their trunks, they got really nice, like, copper or stainless hardline setups and stuff like that. You can use this stuff as well. Because this stuff, like I said, is the same outer diameter as this. You know, it's identical. So you can use this. But for the most part, when you see those cars on, you know, with the really nice hardline trunk setups, they're going to these Union bulkhead fittings here just to kind of, you know, just somewhere for it to go. And then from there, beyond there, they use the nylon to run to the actual bags of the cars. I mean it's cool you can you can definitely dress it up with with the copper okay, so another thing that you guys also want to pay attention to when you're uh, considering your fittings is the thread type okay because as you would guess not all thread types are created equal as well what I have on my right here is a 3 8 NPT and NPT stands for national pipe thread and that pretty much it starts out smaller and it has a taper and it gets pretty much gets bigger and bigger as it, the threads go on okay and most of your valves, tanks, compressors, and stuff like that is going to utilize the MPT fittings. Now what I have in my left hand here is a 3 8 and I believe this is like a newer type design. This is called a world thread fitting. And as you can see, they're pretty much, they start out the same, but the one has more of a straight thread, and it has this like seal here that's supposed to seal it up. I don't particularly like using these, although, you know, they... I'm just gonna say don't use these stick with the MPTs okay cuz uh, you know I just don't have enough experience with this world thread stuff it'll work with MPT and a, you know the other size fittings you know this is like a universal fit but for the most part stick with the MPT okay now, uh, when ordering fittings you know you wanna you wanna know what size line you're gonna be using to run into your uh, bags and whatnot obviously so like this would, if you're looking this one up, this would be a 3 8 male NPT to a half inch OD tubing, okay? And what I mean by OD, that stands for the outer diameter. And that refers to the pretty much overall outer diameter of the tubing here. So you got half inch outer diameter line, you want a half inch outer diameter push lock fitting. Now if you use these barb fittings here, you're going to be going off the inner diameter, the ID. So if you use, like, for example, this piece of 3 8 ID tubing, you'd need a, a 3 8 barb fitting for it. But we're going to be using these, so let's uh, just keep rocking with these. Outer diameter, inner diameter. NPT, world thread. Type A, type B. There's just, it's all this little dumb shit, you know? You just got to pay attention to it. Oh, and before I forget, you guys, there's also another type of fitting you, you can use. I don't have any on hand, but you can also use what's known as compression fittings. And all those are is basically like it's a brass fitting 
a lock nut that unthreads and inside there there's a there's like a little brass nipple that you would insert into the end of the line here so you would uh you would insert the little brass nipple uh put the the, the locking nut over it and then there's a there's i believe it's made out of copper but it could also be brass but i'm pretty sure it's copper it's called a ferrule that you slip over the line insert it into the fitting and then once you bring the nut in and start tightening it it pretty much crushes and you know pinches the line in there which which those have been around for decades but they're not as user friendly as like these push lock fittings so i'm gonna stick with these all right you guys so right here is a perfect example of what not to do when you're plumbing your air ride system now this valve actually came off that uh, blazer we redid in 2012 and before we redid it you can see that the guy pretty much had cast iron plumbing pipe and cast iron fittings you know pretty much to plumb his whole entire air ride system and that is a huge no-no simply because you know air ride systems create a lot of moisture the compressor gets hot and the hot air being forced into the cold tank it creates a lot of condensation and moisture throughout the system and when you use these like cast iron steel fittings like you can see in there when I shine a light you can see all that rust and just junk in there that starts to build up and it just waits to break free and clog your entire air ride system so yeah just don't do this okay just stick with the brass fittings I know these are cheap and I know they work but you know spend spend the four or five dollars on the brass fitting or have to replace your you know fifty dollar valve every other year you make the choice but anyway you guys I think I covered pretty much everything I need to cover and you know pay attention when you're running your lines not to uh, not to kink them because once you kink the lines they're you know you just weaken the structural integrity of it and it just it just weakens it so um, just be careful when you're routing your lines don't route them by exhaust and just yeah just be smart about it you guys that's pretty much it so what I got going on now is I pulled the front wheels off and there was really not a good uh, place to route my airlines without getting you know uncomfortably close to these exhaust headers so my solution was to go ahead and just drill a hole right here I don't know if you guys can see that and then airline is going to pass through the hole and it's just going to come out and I'm going to run it right along the frame rail here be a nice straight shot to the bag and I don't got to worry about it you know rubbing or touching on my headers so. gotta just jump over the other side and do the same thing and then I start passing the lines through so stick around for that and uh, we're getting close all right so I got one line cut for the front and it's always a good idea before you run it to take the time to take some masking tape or something like that Tape the end off really good, that way as you're passing it through the frame or wherever you're running it, you're not just scooping a bunch of dirt and grime and bullshit into the end of your, your airline. And that way, you know, when you plug it in, when you pull the tape off, the line's nice and clean, just plug it right into the fitting, you're good to go. Alright, so I got the lines ran to the front, everything's good to go, got the wheels back on. Everything is plumbed. As of now, everything is 100% now. The only thing I have left to do is to wire everything, so let's do that real quick. Alright, so here's where I'm at now. Got everything wired up minus the grounds. I just gotta tie all these negatives together and ground them somewhere. And uh, I just use speaker wire for this shit. To make sure you label it when you're done. That way you know what's what and where it goes. I found a nice little sneaky spot up here where I could drill where I drill a hole and I'm gonna be able to pass these wires through now don't worry about the yellow wire it's all gonna be loomed when it's done all right we're at the point now where it's time to wire up our switch box now ABS was kind enough to include instructions which tell us which wires go what and which ones uh, operate which switch on the pad which is nice however uh, these instructions was made to hold the controller like this with the cord facing outward I want it to be in my hand like this that way the cords you know behind me I don't got this big dumb cord wrapped around the front 
So I'm pretty much going to follow their instructions, but I'm going to wire this thing completely, I guess, backwards to their standards. Already got the wires uh, ran into the cab of the truck, and they even uh, supplied us the bullet connectors, so you don't got to start butchering wires together here, which is nice. And, uh, yeah, got to find 12-volt positive to power them up, and it's time to test everything out, make sure everything works, and everything's good. Check it out, y'all. Everything is wired up and plumbed. I'm just doing like an initial test. See if the switches, switch box and everything works. This should be the left front. Seems to work. Right front. Good to go. Left rear. Working good. Right rear. Seems to be working great. Both fronts. Both down, rear up, both rears up, both rear down, and this one's for all four. As you can tell, my compressor is, or my tank is pretty much empty. So what I'm gonna do now is pull this fucker off the jack stands and watch it go up and down. So here's the moment of truth, you guys. Let's uh, see what it do. And it's books. Everything seems to be working out great. Um, goes up and down just fine. None of the valves are sticking or doing anything weird. Um, like I was explaining earlier when plumbing them, you see how responsive and just how quickly the truck, the front of the truck lifts. And uh, nice thing also, I explained earlier, I have that coupler, that air chuck in the back of my tank. So right now I've got my, my truck running off my big air tank. Obviously I won't be able to go up and down and all that sort of shit as many times because I only got three gallons of air capacity but you guys get the idea so I got all my silencers installed now fuck it it's pretty much up and working let's play with it for a second Everything's working great. It hits fucking good sides too, which I didn't even plan on making this thing hit sides. I more or less just wanted to go up and down. But yeah, it hits really good sides. That clunking you hear in the front every time I drop it's because I got that, I got a brick underneath my uh, K member cross number there because I don't want to be just slamming my headers into my, into the, into my garage floor. So the brick is helping me salvage my headers until I get the new uh, mid-length headers that are gonna you know allow me to tuck everything up nice and tidy so that's pretty much gonna do it for this one you guys I have uh, 
I think we got a lot done today. We got everything pretty much up and running and working fine just the way it needs to be. Frank's under there checking it out right now. And, uh, you know, he'll report back later. But for the most part, we got everything good to go. The only thing I still have left to do is I still got to run this uh, quarter inch line into the cab of my truck and find somewhere to mount that gauge. But I still got to do a bunch of little loose ends and just nut and bolt check everything, tighten the lugs, and go through and touch up paint a couple of things. I still got to loom all the wires. Um, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, obviously I gotta put the bed on. I'm probably gonna have to cut into the bed somewhat, but for the most part, everything's, everything's coming together really good. Plan for the night is I got it bumped up in the front and in the back. I'm just gonna leave it up overnight, and hopefully when I come out tomorrow, everything's sitting exactly the way I left it. You know, we tested for leaks on the bench, but once everything's installed, that that's when you really get to test it, so. Alright guys, so here we are the next day, and as you can see, the truck is still sitting exactly how we left it, which tells me we did good plumbing it. We ain't got no leaks in the bags, and tank's holding the exact same pressure we left it at, so no leaks in the tank either, so hey, we did alright plumbing it. So the only thing I got left to do now is pretty much run that quarter inch line for my gauge into the cab of the truck, and then once I get that all squared away, figure out where I'm going to mount my gauge, and it's coming along good, no leaks. And uh, yeah, moving forward. All right, so I got everything pretty much tidied up back here for the most part. I got my quarter inch line ran into the cab for my gauge, which is all good. Um, hop in, got a seat here. As of now, I just got the, I haven't really figured out where I want to mount this gauge yet, so I just got the gauge ran into the cab. It's coming up. Uh, above the glove box there right by where the blower motor uh, is beyond the firewall there so um, I left plenty of extra line just in case you know but uh, I'm not sure if I want to mount this thing in here or if I'm just going to get another like auxiliary uh, gauge pod and maybe put it down here in front of my shifter or something you know I, I would like to put it in here but I don't want to use you know this white face gauge with fucking flames on it you know I'd like to find like a vintage uh, black face uh, pressure gauge but you know until that day you know I got at least I got this in here but holding pressure I'm definitely glad I wired my switch box like this because it you know fits in my lap just perfect and uh, don't gotta worry about that stupid cord getting all caught up in my damn steering wheel just sits right on my lap um, if you're wondering what this pull dangler is this is how I turn my compressor on and off when I want my compressor to go on just give it a tug turn it off I'm a dork what can I say how many people you know got their compressor on a fucking pull cord not many but it only uh, works when the trucks running because that's how I wire it due to the magic of relays, so hopefully you guys watch that video as well. So anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for this one, you guys. Uh, stick around for the next episode when we actually go ahead and throw the bed back on it and finalize everything. Uh, make sure we go through and tighten up everything and overlook everything. Make sure everything's all good to go, and then we'll go ahead and take it for a test drive and see how she does. But in the meantime, I just want to say thanks for everyone for watching. And, you know, I was just checking my uh, subscriber count the other day, and I, I broke 1,500 subscribers, so... You know, that I never would have imagined in a million years that I would even have 10 subscribers, let alone 1,500. So, for all you guys out there that subscribe and watch and enjoy what I do, you know, I appreciate you guys. And, you know, you guys are the reason I do it.
So uh, just keep watching. I'll keep making them and stick around for the next one. And uh, if you are a subscriber and you watch regularly, I know my channel is kind of random. I got a little bit of everything going on. So if you feel like comment, what would you guys like to see more in, uh, in upcoming videos or anything like that? But yeah, for the most part, this thing's pretty much good to go. Just got to finalize it, put everything back together. In the meantime, you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching again.